Hi, Jeff. Hey, Philip. Hey, Richard. Hey, Mad Piper. Well, it's funny you should ask. I was just outside in the, in the garage earlier this evening um, doing some spring cleaning because we're heading over to Passover season, which is spring cleaning time. And I'm going through some of my cupboards there. And I knew I had more OGS. I've got maybe half a pound's worth here in, in, in the office, but I knew, I knew that I had more. Anyway, I went out there and I uh, went out under my workbench because I was clearing the workbench. Because um, all the tuck that was left behind from when I moved out, I moved out and pretty much didn't tidy up after me. And after I had the break in uh, last week, I decided I put a padlock on the door and I decided to just clear the services a little bit and make room to sort of put some stuff out there for storage. Um, anyway, so I'm going through some of the stuff under the workbench and I came across a drawer, a loose drawer from another cupboard which I just put under on a shelf and it was pretty much full of OGS. So um, about two kilos worth of what it goes sliced. It was about, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 tins, 100 gram tins. No, was it one kilo? One kilo, just, I think it's one kilo, sorry, one kilo. Um, uh, Ardvox, how are you doing? Patrick, chillax. Bull Moose, how are you? How are you? Oscar, good to see you all. So yeah, one kilo. Um, and the great thing about it is, is that this, my current jar, which I've got on my desk, which um, I've already over halfway through, I don't know, don't remember when I opened it last, but I think I did it live then as well. Um, I think it's a 2021 tin, and I could tell it's not quite as good as what I've been used to. Um, so the stuff that I've got here is just not that old. It's all from either 2021, 2022. Anyway, this is the oldest one that I've got from outside, 2016. <laughs> Seven years of age, so I'm excited. So even though, hey Adam, so even though I haven't finished this uh, jar yet, I'm going to crack this and I want to see what the difference is. Uh, and I also thought I did a little bit of fine tuning with my, because I rearranged my desk. I thought I'd show you guys an update on what my collection looks like. Um, the pipes that I currently smoke. Um, and just to give you an idea, a little update. Um, it's not as many pipes as you might think. There are some other pipes in different drawers and stuff like that, which I put up for sale every so often, but they're not regular smokers. Um, so these are the ones which at least stand the chance of being smoked. But I'll, I'll get to that soon. Um, and I also, funny you should say that, uh, Josh, because I've got, um, I also came across the pipe that you sent me. I'm going to break that one in too. Um, I don't know if I'll do that tonight, but um, I want to see what that smokes like. Have you been making any more pipes, Josh? It's funny, I was actually reading up on a book um, with bone lord shapes. Hey, Jeremy. Um, this pipe here is what I call the coiled tadpole. Um, but in actual fact, I was reading up on some of the literature about uh, Lars Iverson, and well, that's a shame, Josh. Well, hopefully you'll get time to do that, but I guess being busy is a good thing, um, as long as it's work. Um, this, you know, people tend to think that the blowfish is, is the pipe which is sort of done in a curvy shape with the panels on the side showing the bird's eye and then a, p a panel going over from top to bottom, showing the cross grain. Um, and that actually was not the original blowfish. Um, this kind of shape, um, not quite, I mean, obviously better than this, but this was his original blowfish. Um, and his um, stamp, his fish stamp, which was for his highest grade, 
was um, is the blowfish stamp which apparently the first person to get that assumed that because it had that stamp on it that the shape that he had was a blowfish but in actual fact this is the blowfish um, shape apparently that's how I read anyway um, yeah so I, I came across your pipe uh, Josh So and I, I hadn't smoked it yet it's been sitting in a drawer um, so I better do that I just want to empty out the pipes because when I show my collection it would be rather embarrassing if they have tobacco in it and this one I smoked earlier this evening so it's not that bad but occasionally I'll find a pipe on my rack with tobacco in it not realizing that it still had a little bit in it like this Costello and I'd put it back on the rack so I think this is the only one actually so not too bad. Greetings Portland Pipe smoker. Um, the pipe maker I was talking about is Josh Pipe Grump. He's um, a hobby uh, hobbyist. So he got a lathe in the last uh, year, 18 months, and he was uh, playing around with making pipes, and he sent me one that he made, which was really very good. Um, but... I don't want to smoke this in that pipe because it's a brand new pipe and it won't, be the, won't give me the best flavours. However good Josh made it, it's still a brand new pipe and uh, I'm going to try this out in a seasoned pipe. <clears throat> because I want it to be a stunning smoke. Andrew, how are you doing? So, um, and your pipe is on its way. Richard, anybody who's bought a pipe from me, um, pipes are on the way. And this one sold today. This is my last pipe that I made, finished up the other day. And uh, it's a four star. Beautiful grain on it. And that is sold now, so I'm on to the next one, which is a commissioned pipe, which is actually on the lathe right now. I glued it all up. You can see it just over there. Can't see with my finger because I've got it over there. Um, and the stem is a nice, colourful stem too. I thought I brought it to the table. Maybe not. As a, the customer wanted a nice colourful stem, so this one looks like it fits the bill. Ebonite, really nice, multicoloured. That should look awesome when it's done. And it's a non-filtered. But they're all countersunk, ready to go. Arturo Fuente, 30 bucks. That's an expensive cigar. Arturo Fuentes, unless you're going for an Opus X or something like that, that sounds like a lot of money. Jeff hasn't had a pipe in a week and a half, been away. Well, welcome back, Jeff. I was getting worried about Jeff because I hadn't heard or seen him for a while. I sent him a message and he told me he's been away. So it's good to have you back anyway. Thank you, uh, Patrick. So I think what I'll do is I'll crack open the tin and then after that, I'll start to show you my uh, collection. Um, is there something else that I wanted to tell you? Oh yes, of course. Um, I've um, been given um, a consignment from a pipe smoker, um, which I'm gonna be taking delivery of in the next uh, week or two. Um, I just received the list of uh, the contents, and it is mind-blowing. It's not pipes, just pipes, it's pipes and tobacco. I'm going to read you some of the uh, contents. So these will all be going up for sale. Um, I'm going to be meeting him in the next week or two, hopefully, to agree on the prices and all that kind of stuff. But it is, um, it's, it's, a, it, it's a 
it's a big consignment and it's consignment with lots of unicorn tobaccos in it. A really, really fantastic selection of pipes and tobacco. I'm just going to get it up on my screen so I can tell you some of them that are in the list. But I'll do a proper formal um, sort of video on the whole thing. So pipe-wise, there's 64 pipes, and there are uh, maybe 10 Dunhills. Uh, there's a Porsche, Porsche unsmoked pipe. There's Preben, Preben Holm. There's Northern Briars, Winslow, Castellos, Vaughns, Stanwells, Refbergs, uh, Nirups, Jefferson, Jacopo, K. Woodies, Tsuge, um, Petersons. Uh, Jake Hackett, um, Sabine, some uh, Dagna pipe, Christmas from twenty from Christmas twenty sixteen. What else? Morgan pipes, some names I don't even recognise. Cortap, don't know, never heard of that. There's an Asquith pipe in there. Um, do you know what? The vast majority of these are unsmoked. The va I would say about 60 to 70 percent of these pipes are unsmoked, which is very, very nice to be able to get an unsmoked pipe. So that's the pipes. Um, and in terms of tobacco, oh, the Dunhill. There's a bunch of them come in a in a case as well, a Dunhill case. That's pretty awesome. Now, the tobacco list, listen to this. McClelland, Christmas cheer 2017, Christmas cheer 05, 40th anniversary, Dark Star, Frog Morton Cellar, Frog Morton Cellar, Frog Morton Cellar, Frog Morton Cellar, quite a few Frog Morton Cellars, Frog Morton on the Town, a few of those, um, Frog Morton on the Bayou. Three Oaks, Smyrna, Beacon, Dunhill uh, Navy Deluxe, Dunhill Early Morning, Gaworth Limited Edition 2015, Limited Edition 2014, uh, Medal of Valor Lane, Seattle Pipe Club. There's a bunch of those. More Dunhills, Rattrays, Cornell and Deals, Alton Sassini, uh, Astley's, more Dunhill, Rattrays. Uh, Jermaine's, uh, we've got King Charles and Uncle Tom. Let me get to the stuff that you want to hear about. Okay, there's a bunch of GLPs as well. Jermaine's Royal Jersey, Jermaine's Rich Dark Flake, Esoterica Penzance, Esoterica Penzance, Esoterica Stonehaven, Esoterica Pembroke, Jermaine's 1820, Esoterica Dorchester, Esoterica Margate, Esoterica Dunbar, Jermaine's Century, Jermaine's BK Flake, Esoterica Penzance, Esoterica Penzance, Esoterica Stonehaven, Esoterica Tilbury, Esoterica Pembroke, Esoterica and so to bed, Jermaine's Rich Dark Flake, Margate, Peacehaven, Tilbury, Dunbar, Brighton, Knightsbridge, Woodbridge, Dorchester. Uh, what else? John Cotton, double matured, is that? There's a bit of Manil. Uh... There's 266 tobaccos. I'm not buying it, I'm taking it on consignment to sell. Um, so, yes, there's Rich Dark Flake in there as well. Um, some of them, there are some bags and there are some tins. Um, I've seen some pictures of it all, but I haven't actually got it in my hands as yet. Um, but I should get it in the next week or two, all being well. So I'm, I'm not actually buying it outright and then selling it on. I'm selling it on consignment. So there's no actual layout as such for me. I couldn't afford to do that anyway, but it's, a, it's just a, a fantastic opportunity. It's a great find. Um, fantastic pipes, as I say as well, unsmoked pipes. Um, so a lot of it will be tempting for me. I may well buy some of it myself, we'll see. 
All right, let's get to opening this tin. Listen for the fizz. I do find a lot of people struggle with opening tins. There's a very, very simple way to do it. The main thing you need to do is to release the pressure. So I put in a little something flat, you know, even a, a, a pipe nail, anything like that, which has got a, a bit of a sort of a flattish edge on the top. Just insert it in that depression where the coin depression is. Right, and just twist. I don't know if you heard that fizz. So all that does is it distorts it very slightly and then you can just turn it and it opens up easily. Now smell it and see if you can get that smell. Twenty sixteen, yeah. Let's see what the colour looks like. So that's quite a nice dark colour. Mm. When you get that extra bit of age, <laughs> oh, Misty Josh. Yeah, I, I, I like to do the beads way as well, but my nails don't suffer it very well. Look at it. When you get all the golden sliced with, I would say three years age and upwards, maybe four years. See, this one just doesn't have it. What you get is a beautiful, it's not even citrusy, it's like a, it's like a bright fruit, tangy smell. It's, uh, if you imagine the aroma of apricot, which is quite on the brighter side of a stone fruit kind of aroma, Add a little bit of acidity to it, and that's kind of what you're getting. But there's still a stone fruit sweetness in there as well. I can't wait. A dried fig, but brighter still. Dried fig has got quite a deep flavour. And I like to just, you know, let me just show you the belts first, because we've got to do that. I start yanking it apart. So in the 100 gram tins, this is what you get. You get a belt which is about just over a foot long, and you get about, I don't know, six or seven of these belts. And, um, and then I just like to yank right from the middle somewhere. Well, Jeremy, I don't know. Um, I can see you saying, I'm not sure why you slash. And then the next one, YouTube keeps blocking every other of my comments. Don't know. Bulmus, YouTube keeps coming my comment when I type the location where I found LCS 454, 455. I don't know. I don't know, Jeremy. Hey Stevie. Right, so I might have to get a separate jar to put this into because I don't want to mix it with the new stuff. Well, I might just leave it out and smoke it get through it. Maybe I'll jar it and just have it every other bowl so it lasts. We'll see. What I do find with um, Orly Golden Sliced above other blends, a lot of other blends, is that no matter the age, they're usually almost ready to smoke straight away. They don't need much drying out. The, the humidity on them is really fantastic. A minute or two and that's all you need.
Well, um, OGS is my go-to blend. It's what I smoke every day, pretty much. Um, I'll smoke lots of other tobaccos in between, but I start the day usually with OGS, for sure, with my first cup of coffee, or thereabouts. It's my most regular smoke, for sure. I never really used to have a, a particular blend that I would smoke pretty much every day, but um, I think I started to get to that about a year or 18 months ago, when I started to just smoke it all the time. And um, I never seem to get fed up of it. You know, sometimes I'll not necessarily be in the mood for it, but the last couple of days I've had some uh, Latakia blends, which I haven't had for a while, and I really, really enjoyed them. Um, 600 gram tin is good for you. Um, what I've been doing is buying one tin every so often from smokingpipes.com. Um, so I don't know, what they, sometimes they're $15, sometimes they're $20. The shipping on its own is about $3. Um, and I just slowly add to them. And those ones are all going to be brand new. So they're all going to be 2022. But now that I've found these outside, then I can, I'm happy to buy them and just let them age. Because I, I was worried that I didn't have anything to age. Um, you know, there was no point in buying 2022 and smoking it straight away. Um, so... I'll, I'll, I'll just keep doing that, you know, for, for the sake of what works out to be less than £20 for a 100 gram tin shipped. You know, it's worth doing it even if I was to do it once a week. You know, it's, it's very affordable. It's not going to break the bank and it just gives me a, an ability to stock up on a good tobacco. Okay, so now I need to choose a pipe that's going to give me a good result. Where is my 626? Uh, here it is. I actually smoked it the other day though. Um, the OGS that I've got at the moment mostly comes from smokingpipes.com um, and I've said many many times if you buy just one or two tins at a time and you take the economy international shipping non not tracked it's the cheapest um, if you buy one tin at a time it's sometimes just three or four dollars and the tin costs you somewhere between 15 and 20 dollars depending on the offers um, as long as you're not greedy and buy six tins at a time. If you buy six tins, you might get stopped by customs. You buy one tin or two tins, chances are it'll get through. And I've, I've never had a problem with that. Always got through, no problem without getting hit by customs. Um, but don't buy huge amounts. Just buy, like I say, just buy one tin at a time. You see, usually you want to save on the shipping, so you put a few in at the same time, but it's just not necessary because you know, the shipping is just $3 or $4. I'm just re doing this because it's become quite closed up. So I just want to reopen the draft hole. Smoked it. I suppose it's gotten a little bit kicked up in there. It's really quite stiff, this one. stuff and you can see that lump there that was in the draft hole I'm 
many different years of Northwoods. Um, I don't know. I, I do need to get more because I've only... Um, I think I have... My current one is finished now. So this has got maybe one bowl left in it. This is from 2019. And I think I've got maybe one other vintage in the cupboard up here. one from 2020 yeah I think that's that's it that's all I've got I've got a couple of jars of special attitude flake up there difficult for me to say how long it would last because I don't smoke it as, anywhere near as much as I used to. Really? Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have any problems. If you order small amounts, you shouldn't have any problems. Oh, that smells really good. When is this from? 2020, November 2020, so it's uh, two and a half years, so that should be pretty good. A pound every year. Yeah, a pound is, is too much for me, but I would like to get maybe eight ounces this year and then next year. Um, I haven't bought for a couple of years now. I think that 2021 was the last time. But each time I put, put it in my basket, I look at the shipping, it's just too much. And they also they also declare everything. So what I need to do is really, I asked Andrew, hopefully I'll do that at some point, is to just order, order get, get Andrew to order or somebody to order it so that it gets shipped to the States and then shipped over here. Rain on a corrugated, corrugated roof. Well, let me bring the camera a little bit nearer. Maybe you'll be able to hear me a bit better. I'll try and speak up for you, Steve. Thank you. There's two items that I've been wanting to get from them, and that is the, the Northwoods and um, the humidifier. You know, you get these little pots of stuff for your cigar humidor. Um, it's about It's about this size, without the lid, and it's got those crystals in which you add the water to. So I've got one of those in my humidor now, but it's got contaminate, contaminated and um, you can't get them here, or at least they're very, very expensive. So I want to get one of those, or two of those, and, um, and say eight ounces of Northwoods. If you do that, Richard, just um, let me know and I'll send you the PayPal. That would be great. Thank you very much. I think this is actually more than I need for this bowl. I think they're made by Zykar, those pots. I 
was a bit it was a bit frustrating actually. I was out in the garage earlier doing that cleaning up when I came across the OGS and I didn't have a lighter with me. But I did have some matches out there, but they were all damp. It took me forever to get a flame. Yeah, I mean, here, if you send stuff overseas, you have to declare it as well. It's just a question of what you declare. So when I send pipes overseas, I don't want to lie. So I simply put a uh, small wood carving. So it's completely true. And I found the appropriate uh, customs code for a small wood carving and I put it in. And thankfully, please God, it doesn't change. Um, I've never had an issue. Customers have all received their pipes. Right off the bat, it's smoother. Forget the flavours, just the smoothness of it. I tried Cabby's mixture a long time ago. Hmm. It's a bit difficult for me to speak right now, sorry. Don't actually need the lighter, it's off the first light. I might, I think I've even got a cabbage mixture jar, uh, probably also that kind of age that Josh was talking about from 2016, something like that. And I describe it as a very juicy, a saliva-inducing um, vapour. So it's got quite earthy, quite heart strong Virginias in there. Full, not strong, full Virginias in there. With um, quite an, it's got quite an earthy, fermented, hay kind of flavour, but it's also got this tanginess, which I always found used to make me salivate. Um, it was like a richness to it, which made me salivate. It's a nice blend. I, I just didn't find that I wanted to smoke it all the time. Yeah, exactly, Josh. As Glenn would say, I like it. smooth but still a richness to it a tanginess to it retro hell gives you a little bit of a, a spice but there's also a little bit of an oily feeling on your tongue which is lovely the preak level is quite high in the if I, if I remember correctly but maybe josh is more familiar with it it's been a while since i've tried it
<laughs> Andrew's at the rabbit hutch stuff again. See you, Portland. Thanks for joining. Yes, Jeff, I'm happy. Mm. Ah, you joined the uh, PCOL. Congratulations, uh, John. Well, Josh, probably most Virginia-based tobaccos are best when they shine. Oh, have you done a video, Andrew? I shall check it out. This stuff is just great. I'm just puffing and retrohaling without stop. ECOL is Pipe Club of London. You better do that, Adam. You better do that. find that with with OGS each year will we'll give you each year of age will add something to it um, you can smoke it fresh which I'm in the middle of doing at the moment in this jar so this is either 21 or 22 I don't recall probably 21 it's it's fine but it's it's just not a patch on something which is six seven years old it's just not the same thing you just can't compare it Hey Boris, long time no see, how are you? Mm -hmm. There's a world of difference between fresh and... And it's like, that's probably true with a lot of Virginias, but I find it especially with Orly Golden Celeste. Okie dokie, so do you guys want to see my current state of my pipe collection? Or is that too boring for you? Took your laptop, that's not good. Was it on display? Puffing like a shrewd judge, absolutely. Me, shrewd judge, do the Superman thing. Hey, Mark. This pipe is getting a little bit warm because I'm kind of chugging the heck out of it right now. Fifteen dollars for shipping two tins. So work that out. How much are the tins? Are they twenty bucks or fifteen bucks at the moment? Twenty. So forty. Fifty-five. Thirty gram. A uh, uh, hundred gram tins, mind. So that's fifty bucks. Fifty-five bucks. That's 45 pounds. Um, if you were buying it here, you'd pay for a 100 gram tin, 
you'd pay about 40 quid, let's say 37, 38 quid. And if you bought it online, you might pay another two or three pounds shipping. So you're talking about at least 40 pounds for one tin and you're getting two tins for 45 pounds. So not quite half price, but not far off. We can't compete really. PNC, I assume, would be pipes and cigars. Which I don't think we can access here in the UK. At least I couldn't when I tried. State of the Union. So I've got at the moment that rack there and I've got those couple of things up there. I added that second rack onto that. I'll show you that in a minute. So in the past Way back in the past, I had as many as, you know, between 80 and 100 pipes in my collection. And when I say in my collection, I'm not talking about pipes that I possess, that I own. I'm talking about pipes that stand a chance of being smoked by me. So, you know, for a long time, I've been buying and selling estate pipes. Not in a big way, but just if something caught my interest, if the price was right for me to buy and sell it. But I haven't done that very much lately. Prices have just gone too high. I did a lot with Stanwell pipes in the past. Um, but for a few years now, my collection has been much smaller, and I've kept it to somewhere between 20 and 40 pipes, and I tried to keep it within that. And, um, and I try to ensure that the pipes that I keep are pipes that I smoke. If I don't smoke them for whatever reason, then they're a candidate for culling. And my bad pipe might be somebody else's perfect pipe. So, let's make a start. Down here in the corner, we have a Savinelli Ghibli. Um, I like the, the finish on this, it's a natural unstained pipe starting to colour a little bit, but I don't smoke it as much as I probably ought to if I wanted it to get any colour in. I'm not in a rush. It'll break in when it breaks in. Um, I think I may have smoked raw cakes in this, I'm not sure, but I liked the colour of the stem and that band. Um, and yeah, these are all 9mm. Um, but I just liked it. It's a nice sort of... Uh, what is the shape on this one? It's the 614, so it's like the saxophone shape. It's a very popular shape, full bent almost. Um, so that's that one. Next to it is my, I call this my blank canvas pipe. This is um, the pipe that I use for testing out new Virginia-based tobaccos. Um, the one I'm smoking now, yeah, this is the, this is a cauldron shape. 626. Um, this is a Quebec. This is the Northern Brides Quebec. This is the birthday pipe. It's got my uh, birthday on there, the 7th of April. And this was in 2017. Um, so I've had this now for nearly six years, coming up to six years. It's quite a long time. Um, Northern Briars, and I had actually ordered um, a whole seven day set of pipes, all in different shapes. Um, but with the same idea, so the same smooth bowl, silver ring, and black red Cumberland stem. This is the only one that I have left because all the other ones I couldn't convert to 9mm when I changed over. This is my Christmas 2022, is it? No, 2021. And this is a Lestrade Peterson. 
Um, I had to do a lot of work to this one to get it to a sit position that I was happy with in terms of smokeability. Um, the drill as it comes into the chamber is okay. It's a fraction high, but that's all right. Um, but in here, there's always a problem with 9mm with full bent pipes, and this one was no exception. So quite a lot of work went into that. Also redrilled the stem. I had to um, heat it up, straighten it, redrill it, and then rebend it. Um, but it all worked out okay. In the old days, I would have never have taken that on. But next one is uh, the Chacombe 2021 Pipe of the Year for the Pipe Club of London. It's a squat bulldog. There we go. Pipe Club of London 2021. Chacombe. And this one you all know by now. This one is a Sayakapo, which I just got when I was in Rome now. And this one's got like a silver band on the stem, which is countersunk. Really, really nice pipe. Nice sandblast on it. Nice ring grain. And it's breaking in really nicely. It's not there yet, but it's it's getting there very well. It's got, but you know, you can re usually tell a pipe that's breaking in well, even though it's not broken in. Uh, next one is my rosebud, LCS rosebud. I think this was my first rosebud. Um, contrary to what Jeff said, and not that I'm anybody to disagree with uh, Jeff, this one was never intended as a rosebud. This one was intended as. Um, a cauldron type thing. Um, but this one was the first rosebud, which actually was born out of my attempt at a bone gnawed pot, a vent pot. And I had to reshape it because of the briar, the way it was at the time, there was probably a floor or something like that. And I kept on gnawing away at it till it became that shape. And this was supposed to have almost straight walls. Um, uh, so that is the first rosebud. Um, the first LCS rosebud, and all the ones that I make now, usually for commissions, I haven't. I don't think I made one for general release. I should really. I don't see why I shouldn't. Um, but this is the muse for the rosebuds, um, and it smokes really well. It's already golden slice pipe, and it smokes very well. Uh, this is one of my early LCS pipes, and this is my first sort of committed. Um, OGS pipe. Hey Mike. And this one's taken a bit of a hammering over the years, but it's a very, very good OGS smoker. One of my best. It's it's pretty pockmarked and beaten up. I'll take it with me anywhere. Um, as I say, it's one of my first. Well, thanks for that, Patrick. Let's just send everybody over to somebody else. Just kidding. Go wherever you want. This is uh, my, it was a take on, on a Lars Everson pipe, kind of, um, it's a little apple, um, with a rusticated shank, smooth face, shank face, and this is my one of my Northwoods pipes, this is a Latakia based pipe. Then we have my Fabrizio Natalizia. This was one of my first ever commissioned pipes. Um, this was originally a, a non-filtered pipe, and this was actually commissioned with, um, yeah, Lars Everson is the one who did the blowfish stamp. You used the blowfish stamp, yeah. Um, this one was modeled on, hey Dave, welcome aboard. Thanks for joining. Um, this was modelled on a pipe by JD Smoking Pipes, Jim Duchesne. Can't believe I remember his name. Haven't seen him in ages. I haven't seen a video from him for years, literally years. Um, how you doing, Mike? Well, he did a beautiful bent apple for... Uh, Glenn for um, Glenn Thompson 
um, Glen as in Pipe Nutter or what's it called nowadays? Drop Bear Woodworks. Um, anyway, it was a beautiful round, rounded bowl, almost like a ball. Beautiful grain. I asked Fabrizio to make me one like that and this is what he came up with. It wasn't as grained as I, as I would have liked, but still a very, very nice pipe. And um, I would have loved to have gotten one like that from JD, but I couldn't afford his prices at the time. Next up is a Peterson Dracula pot. And this one I bought from GQ Tobaccos. It's dedicated to vanilla roll cakes. And it's got a lovely blast on it, quite a craggy blast, which is what drew me to it in the first place. It's nine mil, silver band, very nice pipe, nice and lightweight. With a Peterson, you can be pretty confident with a straight pipe. Not so sure about the bent ones, but there you go. This is another LCS. Um, the UK tobacconists used to stock OGS chillax. They used to. I don't know why they stopped or they couldn't bring it in anymore. A lot of regulations apply to a lot of tobaccos. I spoke to Sam at GQ. He didn't know the reason, um, but it would be nice to get it back in again. So this is uh, a cracked egg LCS, one of mine, and um, a lovely pipe smokes OGS as well. The majority of my pipes are dedicated to OGS. This one I showed you earlier, which I've called um, a coiled tadpole. Beautiful grain. Oops. How many else? I don't know. We'll check that in a minute. It's a good question, uh, Jeff. Next up is my one and only Castello. I put my own stem on there, nine mil. And this one's seen some good service. I think this one, I would still consider it to be in the middle of breaking in, even though I've smoked it a lot. Um, but very, very nice pipe. And it's, it's quite chunky, but it clenches very well. And uh, I, when I, I find when I smoke this, I get a much more fuller flavor. Um, whereas with my pipes, for instance, and I'm not saying it's got anything to do with how I make it, it just happens to be that way that with my pipes, they tend to be smoother and the rough edges seem to be trimmed off, almost like smoking in a meerschaum. Um, whereas this one gives me a much fuller, it gives me the full spectrum of flavors, which for me sometimes has a bit of a rough edge, but I still enjoy smoking OGS in that. Um, all right, Agriarch, thank you for joining. And this one is um, one of my first Boswells. This is a bent apple from Boswells, and this one is dedicated to Boswell Northwoods. Lovely grain on it. And this one was from 2016. In those days, I was buying up loads and loads of Boswells. So that's my main rack. So it's stuff which I keep to hand. Um, this takes 14 pipes. So there's, you know, enough there to keep me going. And now, let's stand up. <coughs> These are just all my filing tools when I'm working on uh, stems. And those are my some of my stains. I do all that stuff here at the desk. Okay, so this one is my, my recent... I actually fitted this on either Thursday or Friday just because I realized that was just too many. I needed another... Um, another rack just to keep things going. So this one is uh, another LCS, a little author, with a, quite a small bowl. It's good for a short smoke. It's got beautiful grain. I couldn't sell this because it had a, those fissures on the top, so I decided to keep it for myself. But I really like the combination of this faux horn with that yellow stem, but it's a very, very good OGS smoker. This is my one of my, also my most recent pipes, a Talamona, which I got in Rome. It's got stunning grain. I'm amazed at the price of the pipe, but it's got fantastic grain. It's got beautiful bird's eye all the way. Just fantastic grain. It's taking its time. It's not breaking in very well so far. Um, but I've, um, so much so that I was smoking all the golden slides in it. I've now moved over to uh, vanilla roll cake just to help it along because the flavors are stronger. 
Next up is an oldie but a goodie. I haven't smoked this in a while. Also an aromatic pipe. Um, one of my early sort of... Um, I don't know what you want to call this. I guess it's a billiard of sorts. And uh, nice plateau. And it smokes very well. Next up is this one of my early Boswells again. Another one with some lovely green on it. It's quite a big bent billiard with a very flamey kind of bird's eye type thing going on. And this one is from also 2016. And then finally on this rack is another Boswell. I really like this pipe. This pipe was dedicated to Rich Dark Flake and it's on its third stem so it's a bit of a jinx on the pipe when it comes to stems but it smokes amazing now this one i have to turn around okay so this is um a 14 pipe belt which is very cool at the bottom we have the stanwell Pipe of the Year from 2020, is it? Yeah, 2020 Pipe of the Year. Uh, a beautiful sandblasted pipe. It smokes very well. Oh, quite also, quite a neutral flavour. Sorry for all the shaking around. Uh, this one is a GBD Jubilee 9mm. A pot that smokes Beautifully, I don't smoke it as much as I should, but it's a beautiful Latakia smoker. I smoke Latakias in that. Next up we have the 2020, no, 2019 Briar Blues Pipe of the Year. The Radice, which sees a fair bit of use. Uh, this isn't really working very well one-handed. One about nice one Simon okay so the next one up is an LCS Bulldog or Dublin dog call it what you like got a bit of a skatery kind of lines to it I'm gonna put them on the desk because I'm gonna tip them all up otherwise take it down oh you're such a clever boy Okay, so next up is this LCS Canadian. With a flame stem, with a bit of Zebrano in there, and a white band. It's a nice pipe. I'm trying to remember what I smoke in this. I think I smoked Latakia in that one too. Next up is my Bentley by former, a very well smoked pipe. This used to be for my McClelland Virginias, especially 40th anniversary. I've tried uh, moving this over to OGS, but it, it's okay, but it's just not quite there and I think I just need to leave it for McClellan's for when I do smoke McClellan's. Next is a, a Millville kind of apple-ish kind of pipe. I got this one on eBay I think. Um, I put my own stem on it. I'm probably going to put another one on it because I did this in the early days before I was making pipes. I was converting pipes. Not the best job in the world, but um, a really nice pipe, and I'm very happy to have a Millville pipe. It's in a, a UK pipe maker, no longer, but it's just nice to have one. Um, and when I got it, it was almost black in colour, and I gave it a good old buffing, and it revealed, look at this beautiful bird's eye on it, just lovely grain.
Oh yeah, you definitely have to try stuff, different uh, tobaccos in different pipes before you give up on it. No question. Um, this is a Tom Phillips. This was a commission actually. Um, I have heard that he's started making pipes again, but I can't get, I can't follow him anymore. I don't know why. I don't know if he's blocked me or not. Maybe he's had a chat with some of the other UK pipe makers who uh, have taken a disliking to me. Um, but he made a beautiful pipe, nonetheless. Nice grain on it. And it smokes very well. I think I opened the uh, drill on this one. And it makes all the difference. And this is a recent LCS, um, a kind of a lump, lump of coal kind of thing. Very lightweight, Jake Hackett style billiard. Um, and I've smoked aromatics in this pipe, but I've not even broken it in yet. The problem is that I get tempted with too many of LCS pipes and they just don't, some of them don't end up not getting smoked and maybe they end up getting sold as an estate pipe. It happens quite often. This is another Tom Phillips little bulldog, another beautiful pipe and nice rustication. I really like the rustication on this. It reminded me of uh, Leswood rustication on his fern down pipes. And this is a uh, an RC Sands pipe. Um, I bought this one on eBay, unsmoked, quite a while ago. Also another very good smoking pipe, a good neutral kind of smoker. And um, a good robust pipe. I found this sort of flaring at the base. So you've got like a horizontal line there, but it flares just on the underside. And it intrigued me, that shape. It is kind of... It was kind kind of uh, counterintuitive the shape. It just looked, it didn't look symmetrical or whatever, and that's exactly what endeared it to me. Um, sometimes it works by the fact that it's not symmetrical, and it certainly did, did for me on that pipe. And then we have my Asikian pipe, which um, Nish sent me as a gift, very very generously. Beautiful carving. Lovely pipe, beautiful brandy, I guess you'd call that. I should really smoke that more. And next up is my last sandblasted LCS pipe. All the others were sold. Beautiful ring grain sandblast. This blasting was done by Larison Pipes for me. And this one is also a Latakia-based pipe. I've had a lot of people wanting to buy this pipe off me, even as an estate pipe, but I've resisted the temptation so far. And a lot of people have said, when I put it out for sale, let them know. Uh, this is, I think, my last pipe to show you. This is an Escorti. This is a Christmas pipe from 1997, am I right? Yeah, 1997. So I think that kind of is it. I can't say hand on heart that I smoke all of them regularly but they've all at least got a chance of being smoked once in a while. And uh, the ones that I smoke much more regularly are in the rack that's on my desk.
Hey, Maui. Haven't seen you in ages. Hope you're well. Hey, Yusuf. So in terms of how many LCSs have I got, I'll give them a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven. There's eleven LCSs in my in my little collection there, which is not bad. That's the second light I'm putting to this pipe. And re-boring re, um, out the draft hole has something to do with that. Tobacco is approved for sale in Germany. Lit yesterday and they started 12 tobaccos from Germain. Oh, from the German market. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ethan, I do have it. I don't know why it's not on my desk. I do have, you're quite right. That's a, a pipe which is permanently in my collection. You're absolutely right. So, there are some more pipes which, although they don't get smoked regularly, they're definitely in my collection. So this one is um, a Soren Refberg pipe. It's a little, what he called a, a semi-levat. Very small, dinky pipe. But it's quite deceptive because it's got quite a, a decent bowl. And back in the day, I absolutely loved this pipe. I love how that green band just stands out. Um, but obviously too small to make a 9mm. I did take a gamble a while ago and I converted it to 6mm. Which it will take, but I haven't smoked it very much. Um, but uh, it's, I probably won't sell this pipe ever because I had a very soft spot for Soren Refberg pipes. I bought many, many of them. I probably had about 20 of them over a period of a few years. Sold them all except for that one. So that one is likely to stay permanently in my collection. This one is a, an LCS, an early LCS pipe. with just amazing grain. And um, this would have been a four star had I made it now. Um, but what I really want to do is do something special with a shank, put a new stem on it. So I've set it aside and I want to make it something special for myself at some point and then restain it, sand it right back and restain it. Um, 
it's just got fantastic green. All right, bull moose. And there's the uh, the Phil Rivara pipe. That's the Calabash. Um, Phil converted it to nine mil for me a while back. It's just classic Phil, beautiful metalwork, Calabash shape, which nobody makes like Phil. Proper Calabash, so. Before I convert it to 9mm, instead of a filter, I used to coil the pipe cleaner, put it in that chamber, put the chamber back in, and smoke it like that, and I, I could manage it. Then we have the... This was my second ever pipe that I bought, which is why I haven't sold it. 606, I think it's the number. Yeah, it's 606, so it's a three-quarter bent, or a half bent, billiard. Um, and this one I smoked sort of cherry tobacco zim. I learned to smoke a pipe with this pipe. Um, it was mostly uh, cult Blood Red Moon once I discovered it. It's got a big bowl. And this one is... Um, A little commission that I did uh, a while back. This is a lovely sort of acorn strawberry type shape, sandblasted. And it's made by somebody called Michael Burks. And um, part time pipe maker, but he does beautiful work. And uh, yeah, I did um, have another one of his, which I'd sold. But he does do some lovely work. So those are the additional pipes which are, although they're not smoked regularly, they're, they're still definitely in my collection. Just purging that bowl a little bit. I do find that when I come back to the bowl after say half an hour or so, um, it's a little bit harsher when you relight it, so purging it is a good idea. Am I planning a pipe sale anytime soon? Well, there's always one on the horizon, isn't there? But I haven't planned one at the moment. Um, but um, every so often I'll go through my collection and, and whatever's not really being smoked, unless it's got some kind of sentimental value to me, they're a candidate. Um, but, you know, I've done that so many times that I've kind of um, trimmed off whatever I don't smoke and it's it's kind of really making my collection very very concise um, and it's down to that collection that I've just showed you so that's what is that 14 and 14 is 28 plus another say there's about maybe let's call it 40 pipes um, there's probably still a couple roaming around there's probably one in the car I would say it's between 37 and 40 pipes um, and I'm sure at some point that I'll colour it a little bit more because I keep adding LCS pipes and when I have an LCS pipe I just tend to smoke those um, with the exception of a few others but um, like the Boswells and stuff like that but I, I could even foresee a time when I just smoke LCS pipes to be honest sell a pipe now is there anything on there that anybody's desperate to have I don't know I hadn't really planned anything. I mean, I've got a, a batch of LCS pipes which I've taken off the website, um, which I've just, because they weren't selling, they were there for quite a while. I don't mind selling those at a good price if anyone's interested. An 
non-stamped. Hey, Mr. Button. Non-stamped Stan, Stan Wolf pipe. Hmm, cool. All right, Patrick. You coming to the UK, uh, Maui? Oh, I'm gonna miss your comments. Hang on. Hmm. All right. I'm just looking back at the comments. <laughs> You're not having this one, Josh. Don't even try. And you could pressure me for two years this time. You ain't getting it. I did have some really nice sirens in the past, which I bought new when he was releasing them. It was a bit like um, when I was buying Boswell pipes, almost on a two to three weekly basis. I was buying them, just literally taking them up as soon as he put them on the website. And um, so when the Danish pipe shop, they had regular Soren pipes while Soren Refer was still alive. And it was very hard for me you know, I, I pulled the trigger so many times on those pipes. There was a time when he was doing free hands, like really Danish style free hands, like Preben Home type free hands. Those weren't really what I was after. It was these kind of things, small pipes like that. So I had a squat bulldog or two and I had lots of different shapes on him. But I had one bent billiard, which I still, I, I, I never like to use the word regret when it relates to selling a pipe. But it's there are some pipes that I would like to get back. I don't regret because I, if I've had a pipe which I enjoyed, and even if I don't have it anymore, I, I like to look back on, on it, maybe see some pictures of it and enjoy the fact that I had it and just remember it well. But I, I, I never really regret selling a pipe because when I sold it, I'd have put thought into it and made a decision to sell it and I rely on that, even if three, four, five, ten years later, I don't remember why I sold it, but I'll know that it was a rational decision at the time. And I know with that Soren Bent Billiard, which was a phenomenal pipe, beautiful grain, and it was my best Northwood smoker. It was a Canadian, a bent, it was a Bent Billiard with an oval shank, um, and it was too too small to convert to 9mm. And I wasn't really interested in converting to 6mm. 6mm wasn't really a thing at the time anyway. Um, so I sold it. And... Um, uh, I, seen, I think I got good money for it and I was fine with that, but it was such a fantastic smoker of Northwoods that that's the only regret I would have if I would use the word regret, but it's just one of those things, you know. There's a Jake Hackett uh, billiard that I sold, which I would have back if I could, um, but I wouldn't go so far as to say the word regret. I would have it back if I could. A pipe that I wish did better for me was the brandy that I had to cut up uh, a few months back. You may remember it. It was my favorite shaped Soran pipe. It was a bent brandy, classic Danish shape. And it, I, just, I could never good, get a good smoke out of it. I wanted it to be my, fa my favorite, my absolute favorite pipe. And I couldn't get a good smoke out of it. And then uh, one day I did something and I cracked the shank. And when I did that, I saw this huge pit inside, which had either been covered or filled or I don't know what. Um, so I started to trim back the shank and that pit just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it went all the way to the elbow, to the, where, to the junction where the shank joins the bolt. And I ended up cutting up the pipe and chucking it. Um, I think the stem's still flying around somewhere. Jolie, welcome aboard, how are you doing? Steve, uh, do I not get on with 6mm pipes? I can get on with them, it's just that I find that the draw is a little bit tighter than 9mm. And 9mm itself, you know, sometimes can be a bit restricting, although not in my pipes. Um, but um, I just find them a little bit too restrictive. So the coronation pipes. I've got one particular shape in mind that I want to do. I've also been in touch with a, a silver company. 
or gold. Um, I just need to make a decision of whether I want to spend that kind of money. It's just a question of having confidence in getting the money enough of a, of a, a return on it. So I've got the option of doing maybe having some customized crowns made, which is what I wanted to do. So essentially, if you have, um, say, a classic billiard shape, something like that, and on the top of it to have a, a, a really nice uh, crown shaped uh, ring on the top and maybe something similar to match it on the shank. Um, so I was thinking of doing something like that and then I've got, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it because if I did it in gold for instance it's going to cost me a lot of money and I'd need to be able to sell the pipe for I don't know, maybe £1,500, something like that, for it to be worthwhile messing around. Um, the other pipe I want to do is more, not silver or gold based, it's just more of the shaping. It's, it's, it's a type of a crown, but much more elaborate than the ones that I did last time. Um, so I haven't made a start on any of them. Um, but uh, yeah, we shall see. Combination is not too far off, it's uh, towards the end of May, I think. Yeah, so the, the brick series will definitely feature the brick design. I've still got one pipe with that uh, design on it. This this pipe is being held for somebody. Um, he wants me to, to put a, a, an engraving on the bottom of something that, that's of his interest. And I'm just waiting on him to give me the go-ahead for when the timing is right for him. Um, so this, I think, was the last brick series one that I did possibly, but you can see that the design is kind of perfected in terms of how the brick um, turns out. Um, uh, but that brick design really, I have to sharpen up on it again, but I really liked it. I never kept one for myself. Um, might do that this time. I really like it. It's very tactile and it gives you the same advantages of a, of a rusticated pipe in terms of the heat dispersion. Um, it's just a really, really nice design, I think and um, I want to do it again for sure. Yeah, laser engraving is quite common actually. Um, this one is a is a pipe by uh, Armellini. Sorry, Amarelli, Italian uh, pipe makers. This was a, a pipe made for the Israeli pipe club, and it's got the flag, the Israeli flag colours there, blue and white. And this was made for the 70th anniversary of the State of Israel. And this here at the top is, is laser engraving. He's got a special machine which he's had made for him. And he, this is called, uh, he does a few different types of engravings. He has a wheat style and some other things. And this, um, I've never smoked this pipe. Yeah, so Ben Egg, I did one not quite an egg, it was more of a, I don't know what you'd call the shape. There was definitely one that I did. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do a bent egg. Yeah. Um, I've got to come up with an, some ideas to do different things. I've got specific ideas about two pipes, but beyond that I want to just come up with some more ideas. I'd like to make, you know, maybe, uh, maybe six or ten pipes for the series, maybe more. Um, we shall see how that goes. A lot of BS at Mule Town. What kind of BS are you talking about, Mike? You went, uh, John, you went to uh, Mule Town? 
cold, but a good day at the show. What are you saying, Mike? I'm not with you. <laughs> I thought you were saying that it was dodgy stuff going on. Brown sugar flake, good for you. Can you buy that now in the in the US? I thought it was just um I thought it was just uh, a Danish pipe shop. Is that officially on sale in the US? Did you buy anything, John? Did you buy anything made of wood? Rather be a happen, right? Spill the goss. Let's hear it. Did anybody do videos? I want to know about that. If there's any videos on YouTube yet. Hmm. We all like a bit of drama. Oh, Adam! Congrats on that last pipe that you did. Definitely seeing some progress, as I put on the comment on your uh, EIG page. Three pipes and brown sugar flake. Were they factory pipes or uh, artis artisanal? Did you take any footage, John? Town show is a show. Too old for drama. <laughs> all parts, all stages of pipe making just takes time. You get experience along the way. I'm still learning all the time. In the last couple of months, I, I completely changed the way I finish a pipe in terms of uh, the Kanuba wax. And uh, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but my uh, my pipes are a lot more glossy these days, and it's still just Carnuba wax. It's just you learn different processes, and you kind of kind of customize your workflow. Two cobs in a briar works. I've been wanting to do um, sort of full cobbery and make my own cobs, but I. I've not been able to buy the raw cobs from anybody. I tried to get them from Missouri Mission, but they weren't interested. I'd like to get a bag of just the cobs, and then I'll make the stems and the shanks myself, a bit like uh, what Jake Hackett does. Reverse Calabash MM. What was that, Missouri Mission? Do you remember, um, what's his name now? He used to do full, uh, he does the Cobb Nation, is it called? I think it's his name, Mike, as well. He used to always do videos from his uh, truck, the cab of his truck. Yeah, exactly, Jeff, that's what I want to do. I want to make nine mil cobs. I wish I'd have known that, John. Aristocob, thank you, Boris, yeah. That's the guy. Is he still active? Parsimonious Piper, well, I'll see it then, because I'm subscribed. 
you've seen the video up or you saw him taking footage. Did a video a couple of months ago. Who Aristocop? Let's have a butcher's. Four months ago, checking in while trying Canola Neal's warped scarecrow in a cob. What? what? Something. Oh, I'd have to watch that. Maybe I'll get in touch with him and see if I can get some cobs from him. Which I uh, haven't smoked. Maybe I could just grill that out. And just as an experiment and try and make a, a 9mm version of it. Well, you mean just regular raw cobs? I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for cut and trimmed cobs. Um, although I suppose... I don't know. Hey, Road King, how you doing? Oh, wow. That is very cool. The last pipe you made. That Dublin is actually a pipe I would have back again. Um, I don't know if it's the one that you bought off me, um, but it was a, it had a, a really interesting sort of diamondy kind of effect, rustication on it. Is that the one you mean? I do want to get a Joe Case pipe. I've been on the lookout for a Joe Case pipe just because I'd like to have one of his pipes in my collection because um, I um, interacted with him quite a lot when he was alive. Bought quite a few pipes from him, commissioned a few pipes from him, bought some uh, estate pipes from him, not his own, but when he every so often he sold off pipes from his collection. So I liked him as a guy. I watched a few of his videos, you know, pipe making videos back in the day. Where's all your videos gone, Road King? There's nothing on your channel. Yeah, he did make a Dublin for me. But I sold it. It was before my 9 mil days. Um, he did make a Dublin for me, a beautiful Dublin. I thought you were saying that you bought it from me, but I realise you're saying it inspired you to order one from him. Um, wrong Road King. I thought you had pipe videos. Is it the wrong Road King? I'm just looking at your channel now and it's empty. Is there another Road King?
So I would like to have another Joe Case pipe for sentimental reasons. Not particularly because I want to smoke one of his pipes, which would be very nice, but um, I just had a connection with the guy, so it would be nice to have a pipe of his to kind of retain that connection. All right, Jeff, have a good one. Thanks for joining. Send me a picture of it, Road King. I'd really like to see a picture of your pipe. LCSBryes at gmail.com. I'd appreciate a couple of pictures of it if you wouldn't mind. That's very kind of you. Well, this bowl has lasted the whole show. I didn't expect it to. It's taught me a lesson though, is maybe not to start off on a bowl when I'm about to show all my pipes. I tend to enjoy it much more if I just go through from beginning to end. It definitely takes on a harsher flavor when you relight it. Not if you relight it whilst you're smoking, if it just goes out and you relight it, but if you set it down for half an hour and then go back to it, there's a time for all that ashiness to just saturate in the tobacco, and it's just not the same. It's why I tend to pack very light, and uh, if I'm really chugging on a pipe, I'm really enjoying it, you know, I could you know, finish it in, say, half an hour. The second of all, it's never as good, but there you go. And if you let it sit and it goes out and you relight it, that second sort of part of it is never as good as the first. But I will say, I thoroughly enjoyed that 2016 OGS. Amongst the, the, the tins that I've got from outside, there's some from 2017, 2018, 2019. They've all got sufficient age uh, for me to really enjoy them. And the uh, hopefully, by the time I get through that lot, the other ones will be a year or two old. I still haven't worked out how quickly I go through a tin these days. Um, I, should, I should really put a date on when I open it. I might just leave this in the tin and smoke it straight from the tin, see how long it lasts. Yeah, um, so I'm just not sure how many weeks, that's what I want to see, because, and I've never really counted how many bowls I've gotten out of it either. I'm going to do that as well. I think that what I'm going to do, it's an interesting experiment, is I'm going to put a dot each time I smoke a bowl, and then we'll count the dots. I'm going to leave it in the tin, I'm not going to jar it, I'm going to, when I smoke OGS, it'll be from this tin, and we'll see what happens. That'll be interesting, actually. We'll see how long it takes to get through the tin and how many bowls I get out of it. Well, there you go. It was pretty much finished anyway. It was just dottle. I'm going to let that cool down a bit before I clean it. But you know what? Before I go, I'm going to stamp up this pipe so you can see that. So I have this uh, little block that I made a while back, which I keep on my shelf. And I have all of my stamps, plus this one, which is a date stamp, but um, I can change out the each one of these stamps depending on the year. So it has a little thing which screws tight, holds it in place. I'll be sorry to see this one go. 
if this wouldn't have sold soon enough, I would have definitely kept it. Uh, then I'd probably make something similar again. I'm doing a commission at the moment, which won't be necessarily quite like this, but um, looking at the grain on the block, um, one side is definitely better than the other. Um, so maybe we'll do an, another kind of mix of textured and smooth. It's what the customer wants anyway. He wants a mixture. Um, so we'll see how we go. So the first one is the LCS stamp. Next one is London Made. Next one is the stars. One, two, three, four. Then we have the date. managed to cut myself. If you scratch a pipe, if you heat it up straight away, oftentimes you'll be able to pull out the, the warmth, it uh, expands the wood and it might come just come back up a, a little bit enough so that you don't have to start resanding the whole pipe and everything. So. It really depends on the stamps, uh, Andrew. My first set of stamps that I bought, I bought these on recommendation from another pipe maker here in the UK. So you might remember these. This is a LCS Bryce London made in one stamp quite a large lettering. I could not get a stamp out of this. And then I ordered it smaller and um, I just couldn't get a stamp out of it. I'm gonna try it again, maybe after years of using the other ones, maybe I'm used to it. This came from the same guy, same stamp maker. Hey Cole, it'll be interesting to see if I get a better result. Try on one of my other pipes. Yeah, you can see I already tried it over there once before. Let's try again. And on that side. <laughs> mm. Nah. So the problem is that. That because it's in a straight line, unless, see there's a little bit of a curvature to it, so therefore when the ends, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but you see when the ends touch, there's a gap. So the pipe has to be absolutely 100% straight for that to work. Um, whereas with the other ones, because they're sort of, they're not so wide, they're more of a rounder kind of thing, you can sort of dig in deep enough and get a good impression in the thing. I could do with this one being a bit sharper, to be honest. But they all work pretty well. I 
Yeah, it's it's um, it's again, it's practice. Um, the, uh, these are all Buckeye, but uh, these are all Buckeye stamps, which is what I use nowadays. They're okay. Um, they do the job. I mean, I, I've considered doing laser. Um, I haven't yet done it, but um, the only reason why I haven't yet is because I mean, the, you can get cheaper machines which will do the job. But um, I think that there's a certain charm to using the old time stamps. It's a kind of a, for me, it feels more handmade, uh, more authentic, if you like, more artisanal, um, if you have a handmade sort of stamp. Um, whereas if you, good night, Stevie. Whereas the laser etched ones, to me, they're just, it's too manufactory, if you like. So the, for instance, the Talamona, you have a look at that. So what the laser tends to do is it also burns the wood. So it becomes like, like a black print. It's very nice, it's very neat, but it, for me it's too perfect. And it's just, it loses character to me. Um, but... I don't know if you can see that, if it's focusing or not. Hey Sam. Uh, my pipe socks are very straightforward. Again, um, my pipe socks are very straightforward. Um, they're uh, like a PU, like a soft leather feel. They're not leather, they're just PU. Um, but um, they're, they're cheap and cheerful. And I just, um, I can do that as well now. Let's uh, grab a gold pen. And this is pipe 725, is it not? So that's the bag. So it's LCS four star number seven two five, and my signature. That's what I do with every pipe sock. So it's personal, and it's um, rather than spending a fortune on, which is very nice. Don't get me wrong; I'm not criticising it, but I'd rather the value goes in rather not spend, not charge more for the packaging, which ends up in a cupboard somewhere. You know, once you start smoking the pipe. Um, it's very nice to get a pipe with nice packaging. I'm not I'm not dissing people who do that. It's a nice complete package. It's a nice addition, you know, to a complete rounded package. Um, but um, I just prefer to keep it simple. It's easier to to handle because I, I can order these in bulk. I just got an order in today of these. You know, I order them usually around 100 at a time. Um, so, I'll, you know, do a couple of orders each year. And, um, you know, if they were boxes, I'd have to have somewhere to store them. Um, and it's just more convenient to do it this way. Easy to store. I can put, you know, the pipe number on it each time, the amount of stars. If it was a manufactured box, it would spoil it to do that. Whereas on this, it's it's um, it works better for me. And there's plenty of sort of big time pipe makers who did that. You know, Lars Everson, I think Nana Everson does that. Um, they hand sort of sign the pouches and the socks. Yeah, exactly. Um, my, my theory is that, you know, as soon as you get a pipe that you smoke, the box goes in the cupboard, the sock goes in the cupboard and it never gets seen again. So I'd rather spend a bit more time to make it personal to that pipe if you ever decided to sell the pipe you know you've got a sock that goes with it um, and it just you know 
I think every pipe maker has their way of doing it and it's kind of part of the identity and the style of their pipe making. And, um, and that's mine and I'm happy with it and it works. So it does the job. And that's about it folks. Um, so I'm kind of ready to go unless anybody else has uh, anything else they want me to talk about now's the time to ask otherwise I'll start saying my thank yous in case anybody was wondering didn't realise that was there right guard deodorant alright thanks John B-Dog thank you Andrew Thank you, Chillax. Thank you, Sam. Online. Thank you, Cole. Big Country Briar. Thank you, Jeff. WB. Thank you, Boris. Thank you, Stevie O'Gilmore. Thank you, Oscar Flores. Jeremy Viz. Joni the Night Piper. Adam, a pipe wandering. Road King Rider. Blocker, Gamecock, Piper, as he used to be known. And I think that's it. That's all she wrote. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. I've enjoyed this evening. Thank you for joining me. I've noticed that the numbers have gone up in the last few weeks, which is nice. I think we almost got to 50 tonight. Um, so that's really nice. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>